What's up? This is Liz, lead singer of Brevi, and that just happened. Hey guys, what's going on? It is Front Row Joe with That Just Happened. We're at Culture Room in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Ran into Liz of Bruvy, and uh, we're looking forward to the show tonight. Liz, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, want to let you know, saw that you were, uh, and we're going to get into this a little bit later, but saw who you're opening for tonight. Uh, and was really stoked when I found a couple of your things online. I cannot wait for the show. Um, you guys play rock. Yes. Uh, and you're homegrown out of Miami, which a lot of people growing up in Miami, they want to be DJs, EDM music and all that. Where did the rock influence manifest with, with you? Uh, wow, I don't know. I think it's just something that you're that you're born with. Like it's it's just in the soul. I literally think because you know that there's like if it's nature or nurture, rock or like liking rock. I definitely think there's a, a gene. You kind of just grow into it. Um, so I was just one of those people. Um, I think. Also, my uncle listened to a bunch of Radiohead. So. Gotcha. Yeah. It usually, you know, like again for me, I grew up in the house listening to Creedence Clearwater Revival and Jimi Hendrix and Santana. Uh, usually, it comes from uh, the parentals or, like you said, uh, uh, an uncle or something like that. So that's kind of where it came from. Yeah, a cool uncle for sure. Who's not here tonight? Oh, you're in trouble for not for not showing up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Moving right. I don't want to give him all that attention. Moving right past. Moving along. Um, we talked about you guys being a rock band and you're self-branded as loud and messy. Can you expound more on the messy aspect? What do you mean by that? Yeah, I don't play guitar well. So that's where it comes from. <laughs> I just kind of slide around on there, making do. That's where the messy part comes in. Making noise. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. And it sounds like, again, sound check and some of the stuff online. Uh, You've got a lot of soul, not necessarily soul music, mm -hmm. but you can feel the emotion in in your life playing, and that's something really exciting. You agree with with that assessment? For sure, that's the most important part is having something to say and wanting to connect to people. It sounds so cliche and stupid, but like genuinely, when you're in it, um, it's really cool. That's that's all. That's what it's all about, for sure. Awesome. Uh, Again, I, I'm, I'm going to do the reveal in a little bit of, of why you guys are here. Uh, but, uh, you know, the people that you're with, they've been doing this for over 25 years oh, yeah. as a rock band. Uh, you guys, uh, as we were talking off camera, uh, really three years ago just got started. Yeah. You guys are all fairly young. What would you say to people that don't know you've never seen your shows? What would you say about you not having the maturity to really be able to lay it down and, and rock, rock out? Well, um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it's a lot you're, of too, you're too young to rock and roll. What would you say to people that would have that assessment of you guys? I'd say that my balls are larger than yours. <laughs> and they always have been. Even as a baby, I had huge balls. Well, it's not that kind of show, so we're not going to ask you to prove it. But uh, you've got the attitude. Just know that I will. If, you, if need be, I will whip them out. Don't push her. Her balls are coming out. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I love it. So the uh, pandemic and the shutdown that ensued affected different people different ways, different bands different ways. You guys, in the way, one of the ways that you, was uh, you were affected was that you had a video planned, put the kibosh on that. So you came up with something really ingenious. Can you kind of explain the genesis of that and, and what happened for your song, Sarandon? Yeah, so um, we were supposed to film a music video for our song Sarandon and that completely fell through and I was pushing for it to happen even though people were dying. Um, but, you know, uh, most people have a conscience and, and, and I don't. So we didn't end up going through with that. Um, but we did uh, post something on Instagram saying, hey guys, like we're trying to make this music video happen. Um, if anyone wants to submit a video of them, you know, singing to the song, partying, whatever, and we got like a crazy amount of submissions, like a ridiculous amount, and we weren't expecting it, and it, I watch it sometimes, again, it makes me 
super emotional because um, in a time like that when you're so isolated when everyone comes together and supports you that's just like <laughs> you know so it was it was really awesome yeah and, and really just a really cool aspect from the fan standpoint to be able to participate uh in the music that is is bruvy if it were up to me um every single video would have someone from the scene or or that follows us or anything like that because that's it's just more fun that way it's extremely awkward to film scenes by yourself when you're like <laughs> yikes you know so that's my favorite part i love it i love it good Again, I, I teased while we're here, while you guys are here, you're opening for Buck Cherry. Uh, now I know that you've played house parties, you've played warehouses, you've played little places like Churchill's yeah. and all of that. You've played even Revolution Live yes, uh, just down the street. Uh, what does it mean to you though to play Culture Room and to be opening up on the same bill with Buck Cherry? Well, I've, um, I grew up going to Culture Room and I saw so many artists that I was super influenced by. I was just, I was in the back room and I saw like a huge poster of Jamie Cullum, which is so obscure. He's like some jazz musician that like stands on his piano and shit. And I was like, he's been here. Okay. And, but the Buck Cherry thing, we told, I manifested that. I will say right now, like a, a month before we were offered this show, I went to the band and I was like, guys, we need to cover Crazy Bitch. We need to cover Crazy Bitch. It is bruvy vibes. <laughs> we need to make it happen. We didn't make it happen, but then this show happened. Wow. So there's a reason why I said that. I love it. I love it. And you talk about the reason that just happened, the name of the outfit that just happened. We like to, uh, to find out from the artist uh, any of that just happened moments. You said you got one. Yes, I do. It was the first show bruvy ever played at Churchill's. Um, and... Nelson has always had a problem with his strings because he plays so hard and they always break. So he discovered that the first show that that was going to be a problem. His strings broke. <laughs> and we didn't really know how to improvise at that point. I was kind of like, nah, all right, everybody, like, clap your hands, whatever. Um, and we were playing. Uh, have you seen It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So Day Man, the song Day Man. Uh, we were playing that. That was our last song. And that's when the string broke and we didn't know what to do and all of a sudden a man from the audience a very drunk very passionate man climbs up onto the stage and begins singing the song he knows all the lyrics he's dancing he's doing splits he's like fucking with our sign and i couldn't that was divine intervention like that just happened <laughs> and um and it was pretty great and we're really great friends with him now his name is fabio and he's like our god so Shout out to Fabio then. Fabio, love you, bro. <laughs> That's great. Well, again, I'm super excited for the show. Uh, can't, uh, can't wait to see that and appreciate the time. Thanks so very much for, so for hanging out with me. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Guys, Liz of Bruvy, and that just happened. That just happened. <laughs>